Welcome to Maximum Resilience with me, Kelly Bizzani, as we go on this epic journey of how to own your power and the steps to take that lead you towards an incredible life of maximum resilience. This educational, powerful, engaging, and inspiring show will levitate your mind, strengthen your emotional resilience, and revolutionize the approach that ensures mental health as we consciously address a worldwide epidemic. Wisdom is key. Let's shift the paradigm embodying mental and emotional wellness. We do recover. Experience the transformation from victim to victor, giving rise to living your best life. Here's the secret to learn how to master unleashing your full potential every day in every way. Maximum resilience starts now. Hey everybody, welcome to Maximum Resilience with me, Kelly Bazzani, and happy February. We are back with my co-stars, Michael Overly and Misty Blakesley. And today we have a topic that we are celebrating. And it has been brought to our attention as uh, master coaches that we wanted to do a show on forgiveness. Not only forgiveness, but the journey to forgiveness and finding wisdom and choosing to forgive from the heart in order to set your soul free. So we are super excited to be back to discuss this with you. Um, my opening, I chose a quote from my, Mother Teresa, which is, if we really want to love, we must learn how to forgive. And as we go through this, that is going to kind of be the meat and potatoes of what we are talking about today. We're here to kind of educate you and take you through the steps of this. And um, I chose Michael and Misty to come back and speak about this because it's been a lot that's been coming up for us in our personal journeys that we've done ourselves and in our coaching practices. So the questions that we're going to be addressing today are, how do you get to a place where you're ready? I just want to say it is such a powerful place because it sets you free. Can you for, um, forgive when you're not completely healed or have not quite yet gained the compassion and the understanding? Can you do it from a place of hurt? Does it take knowledge from your mind or does it take wisdom from your heart? And what is the most common answer we hear as a society when someone says they're sorry? Michael and Misty in unison, what is the most common answer we hear when it's as a society, when someone says they are sorry, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Well, we're here to tell you that it is not okay. And we want to undo that programming for you. Because can you imagine over and over and over again, if someone says they're sorry and you're saying it's okay, how the resentment might build, how the anger might build, how the pain might build how the hurt might build. And so we're here to educate you on how to undo that programming. So we are gonna dive right in. We are only gonna take one break today because we have so much content and we are gonna just hop into it, right? So our first segment is, why forgiveness does not let someone off the hook, even if you want it to. Ooh. So we're gonna dive into this with the beautiful Misty Blakesley. Michael is going to kind of join in on this, and he is going to kind of lead us into segment two. So, Misty, when you get the question, I, Misty, I want to, though. I need to. I want to set them free. What would be your response to them at that point? Um, You know, for me, it's, all, it's always refocusing the client and reminding them that the only thing that we have control over is ourselves. It's our journey and our process. And so even if in saying, in a forgiving someone, you are hoping that it sets them free, that's a choice they have to make. It's not one you can make. So you, you really do just have to focus on your own healing and your own journey and hold space with love for those that were also involved and that you're wanting them to know that you're in a better place. And that's fantastic. And they may recognize that, but that doesn't mean that will always help them to get into a better place. So I think it's just always reminding people to stay focused where we actually live and in the place where we can actually do something, which is within. That's it. And so when we choose forgiveness for ourselves and that space used to be filled with bitterness, 
what I'm hearing you say then, then that space can be filled with love. Yeah, that's it. Absolutely. Michael, would you agree? Absolutely. It's if we're not able to move one small thing, we can't even replace it with one small thing. So the idea of being able to release in some fashion creates just that much more space for what you want to come into your life, right? More compassion, more love, um, and eventually more self-forgiveness too. Right. And so we hear a lot in our coaching, well, what if I've been abused? What if I need to set a boundary? And Missy, what would your answer be to them if they were to ask you that question? You know, I think the biggest thing is just reminding everybody that's a journey, right? I think that is even the title of our segment today, right? Forgiveness is a journey. It doesn't happen overnight and there is a process involved. And during this show, I definitely, you know, look forward to sharing some personal experiences that I've had with that and, you know, understanding where you are in that process or in that journey and understanding when, when do you know that that's complete? When do you know there's still more for you to do? And so I, everybody, I tell everybody, just have grace with yourself and for yourself, be kind to yourself because this is a journey. Um, it's not like a light switch. We don't get to just all of a sudden decide one day we're going to forgive something and flip the switch. And that just takes care of everything. It really is a process. It is a journey. And that's what I hope to, to help explore. But I think the first thing is that, you know, and one of the things that's so important for us to talk about is that programming that we have around when someone apologizes that our just knee jerk reaction is it's okay. And so for most people, what I find is that when we start approaching the subject of entering the journey of forgiveness for those who have hurt you, um, some of the resistance is in this idea that, but I don't want them to think that what they did was okay. I don't want them to think that I'm okay with being treated this way or that I will allow something like this to happen again, or that in forgiving them, that I'm inviting them back into my life because that may not be the case either. And so I think it's just really important for them to understand um, that part of the reason why they feel like this is happening is because of that programming. And so we equate forgiveness with acceptance or tolerance, and that's not what it's meant to be. And then even more so, we use that phrase, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, when we're not supposed to be using it, right? So if we bump into someone in the grocery store or we accidentally knock something over, most of us are programmed to say, oh, I'm sorry, when really the right thing to say there is excuse me or please pardon me. And so we've just really muddied the term and how it's used and the way it's defined and our complete understanding of it, which is why I think there's so much grayness around it and so much confusion and ambiguity and and this just lack of understanding of how this process works all together. I think it really has to do with the way we've been programmed to use that statement, to give that statement or to receive that statement. And so that's why I thought there could a lot of times be this idea that if I'm going to go on this journey, that, that, that may mean in some way that I'm saying what you did was okay, or that I'm somehow inviting that back into my life, which none of that is the case, nor does it have to be. But a lot of times I feel like we have to go back to the very beginning and really just clean that up before we can jump into that journey. I love that. And the way that I want to set it up and add to what you just said is when we've had discussions about this, and I'm looking forward to Michael, you sharing in segment two, your experience with your forgiveness journey and Misty, you adding to it too, is forgiveness does not negate boundaries. So when we are able, like Michael said, to make room for that, we place boundaries then out of love, not out of fear. When we're placing those boundaries out of fear of, are they going to enter back into my life? Are they going to harm me? Are they going to do that? We forgive the person, not the behavior. And I think that is a really big point to make as we're setting this up for people as we share our journeys of forgiveness is I know from personal experience of being both physically abused and sexually abused and emotionally abused in my past. My journey to forgiveness is not forgiving the is forgiving the person to set myself free and to allow myself peace, not the behavior that they did. So we forgive not because they deserve necessarily their forgiveness, but because I deserve peace. 
and freedom. So to me, it is saying that you're not important enough to keep me confined in this mental prison. You don't get to keep me locked in the past because I am worthy of a future. So I love myself enough to move on. I think an important part of this coaching is an apology without changed behavior is manipulation. And so unconditional love does not mean unconditional tolerance of disrespect. I see a lot of times people want to forgive so badly because they love the person. And in my experience, and I don't know if this holds true for both of you, it is much harder to forgive somebody that you love than it is a stranger. And so just to be aware of these stepping stones as we take you on this journey, as Misty said, to undo the programming of forgiveness is not a feeling, it is a commitment. So it is a lifelong um, commitment that needs to be practiced every day. So when you choose forgiveness, you're taking away the power that it holds over you and you're stepping into yours to have a life of freedom and peace. Michael, do you have anything to add before we get into our, our personal journeys? And um, yeah. Just that it, and we've touched on it already is that we're not condoning whatever it was in any way, shape or form by forgiving. Um, what we're doing is releasing the burden off of ourselves. And I think that that is a really tough distinction for a lot of people to make. I know I didn't get it for a long time. I, I just couldn't put the two and two together. But um, it be, had to become a practice. And now that I have know a little better how to do that, I realize I'm not saying what you did was fine, but I'm releasing my emotional charge around it so that I can move on. Yes, that is. You know, I there and I forget who said this. And so I apologize for not quoting whoever said this, but they said they say you will never know how strong your heart is until you learn how to forgive who broke it. Hmm. And I and I hold that to be so sacred because we talked in our last segment about and we'll we'll kind of touch on it again today, how Misty beautifully described crossing that bridge into your birthright of peace, joy and abundance. And that holds so true with the forgiveness factor too, because at any given moment in time, we're creating connection or separation with ourselves or others. And we will get into this in a later segment, but a lot of this forgiveness is the self forgiveness too. Yeah. Of allowing whatever happened to us happen, starting mm -hmm. with us so that then we have the ability to forgive whoever harmed us. So important. Oh, so important. So getting into that awareness, let's get into that awareness. So mm -hmm. I just want to set this up and then Misty, this might be a good time for you to share your story and then Michael in segment two, mm -hmm. but forgiveness is not about forgetting. Forgiveness is not about being weak. Forgiveness is not about betraying yourself, as Michael said, or not seeking justice. It's about really loving yourself. And then love is possible in the most expansive of ways. Mm -hmm. So it's about suspending judgment for one moment in time and then choosing again in that moment and then choosing again in the next moment. And like Misty and Michael said, you will forgive when you are ready. Mm -hmm. So the mind is your knowledge. That is about forgetting. This is what the mind does and where the memory stores it. We are asking today to do a little bit of a drop into the heart, which is your wisdom. And that is where the forgiveness goes. We need to go a little bit deeper here. And we are mm -hmm. going to share with you our stories about how that happens. So we are asking to not let your mind become your heart. Because remember, you can be knowledgeable, but not wise. So you cannot do forgiveness by willpower. Because you haven't dealt with it then if you're trying to do it by willpower. So that's why we need to go deeper into our heart space. Mm -hmm. If we're not listening and noticing, this becomes blocked. So we trust our inner guidance. Our life starts working. We look beyond what's immediately noticeable. So we need to be inclusive with ourselves and really take a look at that. Because how can we be inclusive with others if we're not being inclusive with ourselves? So Missy, do you want to share mm -hmm. your um, experience? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I want to, before I jump into that though, I want to touch on a couple of things that you talked about. Um, one of the things you said is you have to be ready 
Yeah. And then there has to be awareness. And yeah. I think, cause I've had some people lately ask me the question is forgiveness really necessary? Can't I just move forward? And I think that's coming out of a couple of celebrities who have been, there were some TikToks and some shorts going around about um, some people saying, you know, it's not, it's not necessary. You can just move forward. And so I had people come to me and say, why then I don't know that I want to do this. Is this really necessary? And my thing to those individuals is sure. You can just move forward. But what are you moving forward with? What are you carrying with you as you move forward? It, you know, is it bitterness? Is it anger? Is it frustration? Is it sadness? Is it grief? What are all the heavy emotions that you're choosing to try to just move forward with by skipping this part of your life and your journey, which is the journey of forgiveness? I never make anyone, any of my clients do something that they are not actively choosing to do. But I'm also very honest with them about what choosing to try to skip that looks like. Like, sure, you can, it's going to be a lot harder than it has to be. This journey through life, um, trying to manifest and create joy and peace and abundance. Um, that's going to feel a bit elusive if we're choosing to carry in our energy, all of these really heavy emotions with us from things that happened in the past, which then as you've said, Kelly keeps us stuck in the past. It keeps us stuck in experiences, which we talked about on the last podcast. We were never supposed to get stuck in our experiences. And forgiveness is part of the way that we stop being stuck in that experience and we start moving forward. We, us, the person that's doing the journey, we get to move forward. Everyone else involved, we don't take them with us. They don't get to move forward because we're choosing to do so. That's something they have to do. So I think it's really important for everybody to understand if you're in a place where you feel like I would rather just move forward, what you're really saying is I'm not ready and that's okay. That's okay. I think the, the biggest thing and we talked about this in our last podcast podcast, and this is no different in this situation is awareness. Awareness is 90% of the work. Yeah. We cannot do anything until we're aware. And so my personal journey that I wanted to, that I was inspired to share today about forgiveness and the experience that I had, that was really probably my first big awakening to this journey and really understanding the impact it was having on me and what this process looks like from beginning to end is the one that I'm about to share with you. So when I was in high school, I had a high school sweetheart who I was absolutely adored. I absolutely loved him. Um, thought we would be together for a really, really long time. And so he was my first for many things. And um, I absolutely just loved and adored this person. However, this person um, was struggling with a lot of things. And in their pain and struggle, they were using drugs and alcohol as a coping mechanism. And I was so young and naive that I just, I really didn't understand. One, I had no knowledge or awareness of what they were going through, right? And the pain that they were in and how um, being in that pain means that we create pain for others, whether we want to or not, whether it's intentional or not, it is just what happens It's what we do. And so I'm being hurt repetitively by this person, but, you know, with those same eyes of being naive and someone innocent, I also looked at this person and saw all the potential, all that I knew this person could be if they could let this go. And I spent years trying to help this individual out of the place that they were at. I was very unsuccessful in doing that and ultimately had to walk away. I mean, I literally will never forget where I was standing when I had to address this individual and say, I cannot watch you do this to yourself anymore. And I cannot be a part of it. This, this person had came to school. We, again, we were in high school. We were young, um, stumbling drunk about to go to football practice. And I was like, you don't need to go to practice. You need help. And it's help I can't give you because I've been trying and I don't know how to help you. And I'm finally realizing that I can't, this is something you're going to have to do for yourself. And for me, that really was the breaking point. That was the end. At that point, I let this person go and, and moved on and, um, you know, had another re relationship in high school and, you know, as we do in college and things. Unfortunately for this individual, um, they weren't able to get the help that they needed. And just a few days after their 20th birthday, they passed away. And it was not until years later, probably four or five years later, I was driving in a car 
and thinking on, and I thought on those experiences a lot because they had, they had hurt me. They, I had been hurt and angry and frustrated in a lot of ways about the experiences that I'd had with this individual. And I remember in this car ride, having this just major moment of awareness, this epiphany of, oh my gosh, I am mad, like raging mad at someone who is passed on. Yes. They're not even alive. They're not here. So when I tell people that forgiveness is really for you, I mean that Mm -hmm. no one was trapped in those emotions or those experiences other than me. That person was absolutely restored, had absolutely been set free, had absolutely done whatever needed to be done on the other side. So there was, even if I had chose to continue to carry this, that person was not in any way being trapped because of my experience. And so that was really profound when I realized I'm mad at someone who's dead. Like, What am I doing? But I think what's also important is that forgiveness didn't happen in that moment. Only awareness happened in that moment where I said, this makes no sense. And where I realized what I was doing, I was only doing to myself. And then I committed to use the word that you used beautifully. I committed to going through the process of forgiveness and to try to understand what was keeping me trapped in these experiences. In, in these emotions. And something else that I think is important too to talk about is this individual reached out to me what probably would have been three to five days before they passed. I had not spoken to them in probably two years at least. And through another person got me on the phone and apologized. And it was one of, I mean, it was an absolute sincere apology. They took in that moment, took 100% accountability of every way they had hurt me and apologize for what they had done. And I think it's important to mention that because I've had some of my listeners and some people who are in a situation where they they are looking for someone else to forgive them for something they did, right? Mm -hmm. And here's the thing. That was the only obligation that person had to me was taking an accountability, telling me he was sorry and asking for my forgiveness. My choice to give that forgiveness was mine. Yeah. And it and I had to go through some things before I could get there. I actually didn't say a word. Kelly, I was so shocked to hear that person's voice and to receive that apology. I couldn't say anything. They just hung up. And unfortunately, I it was literally three or five days later, they passed. And so you want to talk about self-forgiveness. Once I worked through the process and the journey of forgiving everything. There was a part of me that then had the sadness because I wanted to tell him, I forgive you. Yeah. I wanted him to know that I had truly and fully forgiven him. And what I know after going through that experience is that the completion of forgiveness is defined for me by the ability to look back and think, think about this individual with 100% and absolute pure love. I love him. I love him with all that I am. And I love every one of those experiences because they shaped me into the healer I am today. They taught me profound lessons. One of those being, you cannot save anyone but yourself. Even if they want saving, they still have to do the work. You cannot do it for them. And that was such a profound lesson for me. And what experiences I would end up having later in life. And even now in my healing and coaching practice, really It is so profound to really know when someone is ready for this journey and when they're not, when they're ready for healing and when they're not, because you can want it for them, but that doesn't make it happen. And so it was just, I mean, it was absolutely profound. So it was a process. It took years and it was one experience at a time, one set of emotions at a time. Once I forgave the anger, I had to let go of the bitterness. Once I let go of the bitterness, I had to face the sadness. Once I let go of the sadness, I had to deal with the grief. So it, there were things along the way. There were multiple processes, right? And multiple experiences throughout the journey of forgiveness. And now I can look back and tell you how I can see that being applied to a ton of other experiences in my life and how that looks. It's so profound and thank you for your vulnerability and sharing because I know 
there are so many people that can resonate with your story. And Michael, when we come back in a couple of minutes with your story, but what I want to say is Oprah Winfrey quoted so beautifully when she said, true forgiveness is when you can say, thank you for that experience. Mm -hmm. And that just kind of embraces everything that you just said. And I just want to comment on a couple of things that you said. I was so enveloped in your, in your story when you were just talking about that, because yes, in order for the person that needs the forgiveness, they need to be aware of, of what needs to be forgiven and have the willingness to want to be forgiven. You can sit there all day and wait for an apology, you know, and know that you've been wronged and this and that and hold on to that anger. And for me, anger is when you feel devalued in some way or it's suppressed hurt and pain. When you are able to have the self-forgiveness and go through that experience and understand why you are, you know, needing that for it's so profound, Misty, what, what you just shared and mm -hmm. thank you, because I know there are going to be so many people that are like me too, Misty, yeah. me too. And when you can look back and say, thank you for that experience, mm -hmm. that is true forgiveness. And, I, and I've had other relationships and other experiences where I can tell you I'm not at the completion phase because when I look back on that individual, I am unable to unable to hold them in that absolute divine level, unconditional love and be in absolute gratitude for every experience. I'm yeah. not there. I'm not there for everything I've experienced, but because there are, because that one profound where I took it all the way to completion, that taught me how to do it for others. And I've done it for others, but it also helps me to recognize when I've got more work to do yeah. and I'm willing to do the work because I'm the only one carrying the weight and I'm the only one being limited by the emotions and the baggage that I'm still carrying. So that's why I say, be kind to yourself. I've been doing this work for so long, for decades. And we will continue to, you know, yes. before we go to break right now, to your point, it's one of my favorite Chinese proverbs that said, the man who opts for revenge should dig two graves. If Ooh. we're not choosing forgiveness, <laughs> it is like taking poison and expecting the other person to die. When we are holding those burdens and carrying it and carrying it, and carrying it, the man who opts for revenge should dig two graves. It is not of any value to us and our growth. It is a lifelong journey. That is why it is the journey to forgiveness. So when we come back really quickly, Michael, please give us your website so people know how to contact you. Uh, www.thecpr.co. And Misty. Hi, yes, it is www.lemonadewithlove.com. And I am www.myresiliencecoach.com. Stay tuned. When we come back, Michael is going to share his personal journey to forgiveness. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Maximum Resilience. We have Misty and Michael here, and we're talking about the journey to forgiveness. So Misty just shared her powerful story of her journey to forgiveness, and we are moving right along with Michael. So Michael, you also have your personal story of your journey to forgiveness. We are helping others and guiding them. Last time we all met, we talked about the bridge over to the journey of peace, joy, and abundance. And today we're kind of guiding people over the bridge to the journey to forgiveness, because it is a journey and we heal when we heal. And so Michael, um, you know, forgiveness, like we're talking about, is an intentional decision to let go of resentment and anger. And so anger will make us smaller, while forgiveness allows us to grow beyond what we thought was even possible. And so that emotional sobriety, right, of expanding our inner world by releasing resentment and burden because it's blocking what we're trying to manifest and attract and like you said if we continue to hold on to it and not forgive we continue attracting the same into our life so yeah. forgiveness is a funny thing right it warms the heart and kind of cools the sting and so I'd love you to kind of share your experience with everybody 
um, of your journey to forgiveness. Yeah. Oh, and as you mentioned before, it's ongoing, right? And it continues. Um, even when I thought I was done with a certain individual, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. There was, um, I, I had this image in my head, and this is of, of Misty's bridge, crossing over that bridge to joy, abundance, love, um, and having all these things tied off to my leg. And I can't get over that bridge because of the weight of all these things that are still tethered. But when, as you do this work, I release one more and I can take another step and then I can release one more and then I can take another step. And um, I, yeah, I just, I just love her imagery. So I, I wanted to put that in there real quick. Yeah. yeah. So my most painful portion of my journey in, in relationship is around my father. Um, this is a relationship I've been chasing since I was, you know, probably born. Um, and it didn't matter what I did. I, I could never get his approval, um, receive his love, whatever I wanted from him. And I chased it, chased it, and chased it. And in the last couple of years, I finally had enough and I walked away from it. I walked away from that relationship and I told him no more. Um, I thought that was kind of the end of it. And then I was able to see him in a different way. And I, I realized all the hurt he had been through. And all the things that he's not able to even begin to think about releasing um, and carrying all that weight and burden with him. And this helped me immensely to kind of raise my level of compassion for him. And I'm like, I, I need to let go of him in this whole other way. And that's my, I need to, for, I need to forgive him for me. You know, hopefully his soul will, will, will hear some of that and bring him some peace, but I need to, I need to let it, let him go. Right. Tell him I love him and send him on his way. And I've been working so diligently on this. Um, and it's hard. And it, it, it's it been introspectively difficult for me. Um, I keep digging down more and more and more. And I was feeling really good about it a while back. And um, the other morning I sat up in bed and I just went. And my, and my partner, Dana, she said, what is it? I said, I'm not done with dad. <laughs> something else came up. I'm like, okay, that's okay. Right. That's, but that's what I want. And you, you spoke about a willingness and it, it's a desire to create more freedom for myself. I have to be willing to let other things go. And that's what this forgiveness is for me is my ability to create that space for more love to come into my life, more compassion towards myself and others. But I can't hold that. I can't carry that if I don't have room for it. So I continue this. Um, I recently did a, a self-hypnosis session on myself to work on forgiving me. And I, I brought all these different versions of me into an amphitheater and it was, I was great. And I, I was working on, on forgiving all these things, these memories and, and things that I beat myself up over and I didn't nearly get done. Right. I, there's still parts of me standing there, you know, angry and pissed off and not, not willing to budge. But I was able to make more room for myself and for others. And this will continue. And um, it, it's really tough for men to do this work because we feel shamed at, at having any level of vulnerability that is not where we, you know, society says we need to be. Right. Um, it's really hard for us to do these things. So I do a lot of work with guys around their dads. I mean, no accident, right? Mm -hmm. And um, it's hard work. I've never done work this hard before. I've had jobs where I had hard things to do in a job, but this is this is like the true the true work to find my soul's calling. I love that, Michael. Thank you. And I think you bring up such great points about you know when when people say you know just let it go. And people are like, well, how do you let it go? Yeah. And I think, you know, these are the great steps about it. 90% is just the awareness and the willingness to allow, mm -hmm. just allow the, the self-forgiveness for allowing yourself to, to carry the heavy burden. And, and the second thing that, you know, Misty and Michael both spoke about is gaining the clarity and the specificity as to what is the cause of what needs to be forgiven. Like Michael and Miss Sebo spoke about, and I'll speak about in a minute, 
it, it might come back. You know, you might think like, oh, okay, I got it. I forgave that, you know? And like Michael just said, then he pops up in the middle of the night. He's like, oh, I haven't, I haven't quite cleared it all. Right. Or, mm-hmm. or Misty does this beautiful clearing of her, of her ex-partner in high school. And then she's like, okay, I did that. I know what it looks like. I know I have the capacity and with other situations, I'm not quite there yet, but I have the hope because I know how, what it looks like. So I'm open to the ability to do it again. Right. So there's also no expectations about a time limit. It's like grief. There's no timeline on grief. There's no timeline on forgiveness. And I think people put that pressure, like it's been two years since my divorce. Why can't I forgive? It's been three years since my, mm -mm, right? So if, if you're like, and Misty said too, if you're not ready, can you choose to move forward without forgiveness in your energetic field? Well, you can, but you will not have everything you want and be able to turn towards that peace and that love and that abundance, which is your birthright. So when you forgive, you heal. And when you let go, you grow, you grow. And so I love, um, I love everything we're talking about. You know, I want to share a little bit about, um, I'm listening to these stories and man, when I think about forgiveness for myself, I'm one of those holder honors, you know, I'm one of those, yeah. I'm, I'm going to hold on. And, and five years later, if you try to talk to me, I'm like, remember when five years ago, you did this to me, I will own that. And so I have to work, (laughs) I have to work really hard, you know, because my trust has been broken so many times um, that I guard, but that's my old survival skills that I needed. It served a purpose. I don't need them anymore if I'm going to be in my full abundance. And um, Misty was sharing about her partner and um, it was about two weeks ago, I got a new phone. And I switched carriers. <clears throat> and so my text messages and things were porting over. And um, I had a fiance back in 2017, and he was very new in sobriety. And, um, but I wanted to have a child. I didn't feel that I would complete, it would be complete if I wasn't a mother. And um, so I found him and he was charismatic and he was lovely and he smelled good. I always love a man that has a little cologne on and he was just joyful. And I knew he was early in sobriety, but I looked past that because I was so fixed on, I want to have a child. And, um, I saw past a lot of the things like Misty said, I saw all the good. And, um, anyway, he passed away from his alcoholism and I had set strong boundaries around that. And I didn't want to grieve that. Um, And I didn't want to forgive that, but I didn't realize how I was holding it. Even though my business coaches were like, let's do this with your business. And then they try to slide in, you know, are you, you want open to love? Like, what do you want in partners? I'm like, I'm married to my business. I'm not open to love. I didn't realize that was because I hadn't done the forgiveness. And so moving forward, the, the numbers are porting over the numbers are porting. And I was just called to look for Lee in my phone and his text messages were gone and I lost it. I was like, I'm not ready for those to be gone. I haven't forgiven him. To Misty's point, I didn't need the text messages to forgive him. He's gone. His demons are gone. His alcoholism is gone. He's in heaven. But I was carrying the weight of the past five years. I wasn't allowing myself to love. I'm getting emotional. I wasn't allowing myself to love. I wasn't allowing myself to look for anybody to love. I was carrying the weight of his alcoholism with me. I was using it to work and work and work and get my message out and stuff because I was so angry at him because he was had so much potential and I felt like it was such a life lost. And I was so angry at myself because I thought I could have done more to save him. So where do I start? Self-forgiveness first. I had to grieve. And to Misty's point, I was like, how could he have been honest with me when he couldn't be honest with himself? My disease. I couldn't be honest with myself. 
how could I be honest with other people in my disease? So I had to have the self-forgiveness. Then I could forgive. Then I could release. To the point of our podcast last time, feel it, experience it, release. I felt so light that day. I felt so light that day. And we get those questions a lot. What if they died? Mm -hmm. So Misty, what would be your answer? And Michael, then I'll go to you. If someone has passed away, if mm -hmm. it's somebody that they can't be in contact with, what would be your mm -hmm. suggestions to them in that, in that case? Oh my gosh. Thank you for asking that question. And I just want to st stop for a minute and say, thank you so much for sharing your story for being vulnerable, for letting the tears fall, right? Because that's what this is for. This is yes. what this conversation we're having is we're telling yeah. everyone that is listening. You are not listening by accident where you're telling you it's possible. And we're also telling you, we do understand the pain. Yes. We do understand the ask that is the journey of forgiveness. I promise you, we understand the ask. Yes. And for me, um, what what I chose to do was write a letter where I, because I got to a point where back, something that Michael, you said, which is in this process, the journey of forgiveness, part of what allows you to have forgiveness once you have the awareness is the perspectives. And the more questions I asked, the more I, I learned about him and what he had gone through that led up to the um, use of alcohol and drugs to numb the pain. I didn't know he was in pain. I didn't know the significance and how to respect for his memory. I won't say what those were, but they were intense. Mm -hmm. They were severe and I didn't understand. And even when I had some knowledge of being exposed to some of those things, to having that perspective, I still didn't fully understand what it would be like to experience that. Right. In, the, in that firsthand experience. Yeah. And so with every bit of perspective, it allowed me to have that awareness so that I could forgive. So I could build compassion. So there's the forgiveness of yourself, of what happened. There's the compassion. So you learn to have compassion for yourself, but then you also learn to have compassion for others. And it, it's just, it's such a beautiful process when you really allow yourself to go through it. So at the end, when I was really coming to a completion of this journey for this particular individual and set of circumstances, I really wanted him to know that I forgave him, especially because he had asked so beautifully and authentically for my forgiveness. So I wrote him a letter and I have a burning bowl and I burned that yeah. with, and, and, and like you, Michael, you said, I love imagery. I'm very visual. I, 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 um, have lots of visions. I receive a lot of things visually. And so I just visioned those words wrapped up in that smoke, making its way to him. And I know I didn't need to write the letter there. Our, our consciousness never dies. He is fully aware. He has been with me on that entire journey. I believe, and I believe he was rooting for me the whole time because he knew he was free. Yes. And he wanted yeah. me to be free too. So he yeah. knew that this was for my freedom. It had nothing to do with him. But once I was done, I wanted him to know how grateful I was because I'm telling you, the experiences were profound and shaping me into someone I love, someone I love to share the world with. And if it had not been for him and those experiences, those pieces would be missing. So for me, that's how I chose to do it. I, I can also walk people through meditations. And so Michael, you kind of talked about that where you can pull them forward. So there's lots of ways if someone's passed on and you get to that place where you, maybe you want to tell them how you feel. Maybe you're in the midst of dealing with your anger and your bitterness, and you want them to understand how their actions and what they did and went through made you feel the impact it had on you. You, you can do that. Even if they're alive, you can do that. I don't ever recommend doing it with someone because again, it's not about them. It's about you. But if you get to a place where you want to have reconciliation and that person's no longer here, that's how I did it. That's beautiful. And Michael, do you have anything you want to add to that? And Misty had said you do some meditations and some hypnotherapy around that, but mm -hmm. what is your process if either the person is not accessible to you or 
um, if people are dealing with people that were abusive and they want to forgive or or anything like that, what would be your suggestions? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, God, Missy, that was wonderful. Beautifully said. Mm -hmm. um, so my older brother died in March of 17 and he was kind of my hero. So I was really upset when he left. But I found myself recently being mad, so mad at him um, for not standing up for me when we were kids, right? For not protecting me. And um, it was, God, it was cathartic. I just stood and screamed at him and told him exactly how I felt. And then also forgave him because I didn't want to carry that anymore. So, you know, it, it, it's hard to do in the workplace if you're in a cubicle and a bunch of people around you. Um, I spend time in the wilderness. Some, or you can do it if you're at home by yourself. Um, but do that for yourself and do that for the other person because that does release. It releases on both ends of that line. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it can, you can write the letter. I love burning things. Dana and I do that. We, yes. we, do, uh, yeah. we do a little foray to the mountains once a year where we do a big release. We say prayers. We we have letters that we, we will either read or just throw right into a burning bowl. Um, sometimes it's beating the crap out of a pillow with a baseball yes. bat. Yes. Uh, making little rocks from big rocks. I do that one. And uh, it's just, there's something about that release for me that is, is, is necessary because of how my nervous system has been so bungled up since I was a kid. I love so, it. I love all of those. And I love how you and Misty talk about the more that you release, the more complete and whole you become to love and serve others. Mm -hmm. And I love that, you know, I do all of those things as well. I, I write, I burn, I even have mailed letters to people that have passed on. I put a stamp on it and put it in the mailbox. I don't know where it goes. I don't need to know. Um, I love being out in the wilderness. I do prayer. You know, there's three things that are always available to us. Love, prayer, hope, you know, so and forgiveness. I always just when I I pray, you know, and even if you're not religious or spiritual, um, I start, you know, my sponsor in recovery would always say pray for them. I'm like, I'm not praying for them. Mm -hmm. I would be so resistant. She's yeah. like, pray for them until it feels good. So I would start and I'd be like, I pray that they don't have a good life, you know, and the next day. I pray that they have everything they want and need the next day. But by day eight or nine, it was like, I pray that they have a life full of abundance and this and that, right? It just took that like repetitive prayer. You don't have to belong to a religion to do it, right? It's just, you just, it's just that repetitive, repetitive, repetitive every day. I also do etheric cord cutting, right? I send them love and abundance and peace. And I cut the cord from any negative energetic field coming back to me. So there's so many things that we can um, do. And I took this one course on conscious leadership and this beautiful shaman and Anita Sanchez, please don't get mad if I pronounce this wrong, but she gave us this ho opomo pomo forgiveness prayer to say to ourselves, especially or to others that says, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Oh my God, Kelly, I just discovered that like two weeks Did ago. You? Okay. Yes. I, oh, oh no, oh, oh no. Yes. Can I say it right is. again? Yes. And it it's is. so simplistic, but it is yes. the most powerful prayer. And so sometimes, you know, I'll get done with 10 sessions and I'm like, I didn't do enough. I didn't do enough. I didn't. Cause that was my main core belief I'm working on. I'm not good enough. Right. And I will get in bed and I'm like, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. You're good enough. Right. And that prayer is just so powerful. And there's a song that goes with it. And so if you're interested, you know, reach out to me, Michael or Misty, and we can get you set up with that too. But it's, you know, it's, there is so like Misty was talking about, it takes a lot of grace, mental strength, and courage to practice forgiveness. And you heard me say practice, forgive, not master forgiveness, not complete forgiveness, practice forgiveness, either towards yourself or towards the person that wronged you. So while you may never forget while, how you were hurt, by forgiving, you are taking the steps and the journey 
towards healing yourself spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and facing towards that mansion of peace, joy, and abundance that is your birthright. So in closing, um, we have a couple of minutes. Misty, what is the message you want to leave our audience with? Just love yourself. Love yourself exactly where you are. It's okay when you're ready. People like Kelly and Michael and myself will show up in your life in some way. And there will be there people there to help guide you when you're ready. So just the first thing to do though, is just love yourself exactly where you are. It's okay. And there is a journey. There is a path and and we want you to get there. We're rooting for you. Um, we're loving you. And we're grateful that you're sharing this experience with us. Thank yes. you, Kelly. And Michael? I'm going to bounce right off Misty. Yes. Um, yes. Give yourself a little break. Find some way to just accept a little bit where you're at because you're exactly where you're supposed to be. If you weren't, you'd be somewhere else, right? Um, give yourself a little slack, know that that's where you are and it's perfect. And if you want something else, then take one small step towards that. Yeah, but do it, do it from love, do it because it's going to heal you. That's it. And I'm going to bounce off the two of you, you know, Martin Luther King Jr. I'm going to end with his quote. We must develop and maintain the capacity to forgive. He who is devoid of the power to forgive is devoid of the power to love. So like Misty and Michael said, just moving that needle just a little bit, starting with yourself. Forgive yourself for being hard on it one step at a time. We all love you. We're here for you. One more time, Michael, your website. www.thecpr.co And Misty? www.lemonadewithlove.com And I am www.myresiliencecoach.com we love you. We embrace you. Until next time, we're wrapping our arms around you in love. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Maximum Resilience with me, Kelly Bazzani, your ally for addiction. Tune in the first Monday of each month at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Engage in this epic journey of how to own your power and the steps to take that lead you towards an incredible life of maximum resilience. We do recover. Experience the transformation from addiction to living your best life. For more information about Maximum Resilience and me, Kelly Bazzani, visit MyResilienceCoach.com. That's MyResilienceCoach.com.